Hi Mr. Emery, <coughs> so excuse me, I thought I'd do you this quick video, I'm staying in a hotel tonight, um, I've had to use my money, all my money just to survive, I can't stay in the car anymore, I've done it too much now, um, it's made me very sick. Anyway, this was a completely preventable situation, I've been illegally evicted twice in a row through no fault of my own, I've been subjected to human rights abuses, neglect, false allegations, the list goes on. I've been falsely accused of making an IED, which is complete and utter nonsense, um, especially given my extensive knowledge of the subject. They did not seize my metal working lathe, 3D printers, electronic components and so on, everything that you would use to build an IED. None of that was seized. What they did seize was absolutely laughable and clearly just done to antagonise me. I've still got it in the evidence back now. It was the remnants of a spool of 3D printer filament, 1.75 millimeter filament, which they tried to claim was wire and clippers. That these were their experts. Um, oh, just an absolute joke. Um, they also claimed it was capable of being a time delay device, yet there were no electrical, mechanical, or igniferous components which would anyway indicate this. Um, I could draw a circuit diagram of what this thing actually was. It wasn't even something I built, um, uh, especially given like, I had a lathe and everything else and so on. But anyway, um, all it was was a battery pack, a high power, tr uh, high voltage transformer, and a switch. That was it in, in like a some plastic case or something. Anyway, yeah, they also tried to claim it was capable of launching model rockets or being a rocket launcher. Um, oh God, this is ridiculous. Even if that were true, that's perfectly legal. I, um, I've been building rockets since I was in school, my first school. Uh, again, like my interest in chemistry and my knowledge of things that go bang has st stemmed from a very young age and it's just not abated and this sort of supports the autism. Um, uh, the autism symptoms diagnosis well so i'm struggling to articulate myself at times i'm very distressed at the moment i'm in a really bad way at the moment um so yeah there's the attempted murder against me ignored um knife crime ignored there's repeated abuse against me the, um like my life's in pieces man um i i am in a really seriously bad way and this was no no nobody's doing anything about it I've been given an asbo now for daring to stand up against the vile, putrescent, mendacious, Machiavellian, scurrilous, tyrannical Nazi filth that are Torbay Council. Um, it's an absolute joke. These people are pure bloody evil. Uh, I've even been to the LGO who are equally as flagitious and praetorian as these disgusting, poor excuses for human beings that just allow human rights abuses. I don't know if I'd elucidated before what else transpired during one of those illegal evictions. Um, a lady I've known for many years, her name's Deanna Adams, she lives in Exeter, I went to school with her son, went to army cadets with him and so on. Anyway, she made sexual advances towards me and at the time I had social media and I got, ri I got rid of it and her um, and she just gave me nothing but abuse. She then informed my ex-landlady Kim Morley that I was in court for being a paedophile and assaulting a woman which everybody took as true with no evidence whatsoever. Ed Williams from Torbay Council, public enemy number one who turned up, the next door neighbours Lee and Cara Harris who should be reported and investigated for child abuse. Um, like I say, everybody with no evidence, it was of course proven to be completely false. Nothing has changed. This has been happening since I was a child and I am sick of it, except this is now just getting out of control. 2016, that disgusting yank, uh, Caroline Nicholson, um, called me and told me that I was banned due to false allegations from Joe Verhayen, who made uh, advances towards me and I ended up rejecting her. She was an absolute fruit loop and she is a serious risk to uh, the public, men and women. Um, and this I can prove as well. Anyway, um, I got banned, had my therapy removed uh, not long after as well because I dared to stand up to them. They made ridiculous claims. I've caught them out lying, threatening. Them. I mean, they have fabricated risk assessments. All of it I can prove. 
anyway of course the complaint eventually that was done by pals however it, even though it was in my favor they downplayed how serious it actually was um and it was just a joke an absolute joke the claims that they made about putting policies in place which were already in place and since when do you need a policy to have the integrity to procure both sides of a story before banning someone i've also caught them out as well uh, publicly with um uh, this uh, freedom of information website um, my health was put at risk as well in 2021. A so-called care coordinator didn't do a damn thing. He claimed all these issues with being harassed, abused, threatened, and so on. False allegations, threatened with illegal eviction, weren't safeguarding issues. Yes, they are. They, even the next care coordinator, who I couldn't stand, uh, she was just bereft of any capacity and any qualities that you would expect a care coordinator to have. But in her defence, she said, yes, these are safeguarding issues and that she'd spoken to adult safeguarding um, and that they needed evidence. And I said, well, I've got the evidence and nothing's happened since then. And all these safeguarding referrals have been completely ignored. A lot more has gone on. I am suicidal. I want to die. I have made the decision to die. You could say that this is as, as a result of mental illness. Um, but it's not in the sense that people keep referring to it these days and the stigma attached to it. The, uh, the conclusion that I have come to is reasonable as a matter of deductive logic. I have been continually abused. I am innocent of so much. My life has been destroyed. I have no help and support. I can prove immense criminal abuse. I have evidence of malicious prosecution from the filthy Nazis that are the police, HMCTS and the Crown Prosecution Service. I could also prove that my ex Helen Rudal, a paramedic, was also controlling and coercive. She wouldn't let me live in my own place, therefore she's also guilty of false imprisonment. She used psychological manipulation on me repeatedly. Now, I won't put her all down, we did have some nice times, but again, that really is irrelevant at this point. Especially also considering when we lost the baby, which she only wanted to keep me in her life. Um, we were abused at the hospital, I wanted to make a complaint, and she turned round to me, and I quote verbatim, she said, if this happened, um, this happened to me, not you, if you make a complaint, we're over, like manipulating me again, and I was having to take care of her son to and from school, doing the cooking, cleaning, what I could do, everything, I had no help and support, my mental health was in pieces anyway. I've also got evidence of other false allegations against me. Uh, the, the attempted murder against me has been completely ignored for the most part. Public Enemy Number 1 have not uh, brought any charges against this individual, despite the fact that there's evidence of it. Um, I have received a paltry amount of compensation from G4S, but that's not enough. This, this disgusting individual needs to be prosecuted for what he's done to me. He is a risk to the public. Um... There's numerous other things that have transpired which have completely destroyed my life. Like, I am in so much distress at the moment. I've lost in excess of 17,000 now due to the crime and abuse committed by Torbay Council and so on. Um, with the storage fees and so on. So that's adding to my distress daily. I'm having chest issues. I've also got evidence of abuse committed by the Integrated Care Board who are refusing to respond to my complaint and committing further human rights abuses and not giving me the health care that I need. This is serious and not one person is reporting it. Not one person is getting a solicitor for me and legal help to take these people to court because everybody's complicit in this bloody abuse against me and I have had enough. I am extremely unwell. I haven't even begun to scratch the surface with this video and what I've disclosed thus far. This is only a very small portion, an extremely small portion of what has occurred that's causing me severe distress. Bright Star Lettings, again so much there they did not intervene they did not prevent this clown from his harassment and abuse and it happened to other tenants way before i even got there and we've got evidence of theft as well and other false allegations from this individual that lived there absolute nightmare they have gotten away with damn murder i also provided evidence that the property was unsafe some disgusting individual by the name of samantha hart from torbay council with delusions of grandeur claimed that she was an expert and assessed the property as safe despite the fact that i provided evidence photos current photos and video footage 
that the doors were covered up with heavy duty cling film and these like flower trays in the bottom to catch the alleged water that was supposed to drip him because the landlord was a psycho. He was not a fit and proper person and therefore under law he should not have been given a license to run a, a house in multiple op occupation. So anyway, I got threatened by Torbay Council. If I released any of it, they'd do me for defamation. Then about a week later, I get an email uh, actually supporting my complaint, saying that the property had now been brought up to legal specification. Right? I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. Right? And this is also how sickening the Devon Recovery Learning community are. Tiverton Radio was one of the uh, courses that they ran, uh, 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 course providers they ran with. Um, and they had to withdraw at one point, but the Devon Recovery Learning Community and Recovery Devon everyone actually made false allegations to Public Enemy Number One that um, it was because of me. This isn't true, and I can prove it. I actually spoke to the lovely lady at Tiverton Radio, and it was because there was a family illness, a terminal illness, cancer, I believe. I've still got copies of the screenshots, but that is how far they would go to absolutely discredit me and cause me uh, pain and suffering. But because the police are Nazi detritus, they are not doing anything. Nobody is being prosecuted in any way, shape or form. I was also taken advantage of in a hotel. Because of the false allegations I've had from women before, I was too scared to say no. I've been taken advantage of because I am a vulnerable adult. I should have daily help and support. Um, I've uh, the um, Devon Partnership Trust are claiming I am a, not, I'm not autistic. However, the evidence actually refutes that, and I've had other independent people say that I am on the autism spectrum, but it's not official in this country. Um, I, I am in severe distress, mate. Um, I'm having to sell pretty much everything. I've sold my guitar, my drum kit, my turntables. Um, my metal working lathe, uh, music production stuff, um, telescopes that I had, like, like, my life's just been completely destroyed. Um, I am beyond struggling, I'm not having any help, I am so angry. I've also got this bail thing that is supposed to be coming up, but I can't call these people. I'm only doing this video so that you are aware of how serious this is. I cannot speak to anyone any, anymore. It's selective muted. I've had this for my whole life. Um, I didn't actually know what it is until much later in life. Um, yeah, um, so I don't know what's going on there. I'm in so much distress and I, I am in desperate need of help and advocacy and I don't know what to do anymore. I, I, I'm really, really distressed at the moment. Um, I can't cope. I've been trying to make music. I can't do that. Um, the lady in the hotel, her son's a musician and they kindly lent me a guitar. But I am really, really depressed and I am physically unwell and I am unable to get any medical help. I really do have evidence of all this. This is serious. This needs to be going public. I need to be contacting media and so on. I need help to deal with so many things, but I am not getting the help and support that I need at all. My life has been completely, totally and utterly destroyed by these people. My, and I am getting vilified for my interests, like I say, with the chemistry and explosives. I have been completely open and honest with my knowledge. My, uh, autistic people do tend to be very open and honest and I have nothing to hide. I, of course, would not teach nefarious people to do what I know how to do. Right, but why do I, like I said earlier, I, from an, a small age, I have just been fascinated by things like this. Right, so, and despite the bullying at school, even by teachers, there were some teachers that I got on well with, and yes, you would guess that it was the science teachers. One of which I uh, looked over at me once and giggled and laughed when I'd built something, as if to say, well, go on then. <laughs> yeah, so... But I've never used my knowledge for ill harm, and I never would do. You know, um, it's like my like the engine, the ideas that I have for building things. Like, and even though I despise the police in every way, shape, and form, I've actually um, like a couple of years ago started devising an app um, so that they can recognise potential explosives um, or and materials for making them. Um, just simplified uh, it literally I, was, I designed the whole app and stuff but been too ill um, and it wasn't because because I wanted to help them it was protecting other people like I say there's loads of other ideas that I, I just come up with but I've got no outlet 
like I say, my life's been destroyed. Kevin Foster's also involved. Um, Alison and Hernandez is also involved. Um, public enemy. I've caught public enemy number one lying again. Um, when I was arrested because of these false allegations and so on, um, the armed police who turned up, this idiot slung his rifle in front of him when I was handcuffed with my hands towards his weapon. I was actually in the process of taking his magazine out and I also had access to his fire control group. What an idiot. And I'm, I, I have said this before, I am better trained than they are. And this isn't a lie, I can prove that I've been around the world and I've trained with different people. And even a friend of mine who I have trained with, he's a firearms instructor in this country. He has a business not too far, actually, um, uh, from Devon. And I, I've obviously spoken to him about this and he agrees, yes, these people do not have the mental capacity nor the proper training. He said he's surprised that some of them even get signed off. Um, and now I'm being harassed by these people as well. Um, but anyway, on that occasion, um, I had no socks and shoes on. I also had open cuts on my feet and my arms from self-harm. And I was put into the back of a van that was covered in blood. The complaint response that I've had was that I was spitting at officers, which is why they put me in the back of the van. This is not true. I've actually had a subject access request and I've got a copy of the body cam footage and it does not accord with what this disgusting, putrid individual from professional standards has said. Not only do is there video evidence of blood on there and one of the officers saying that there's blood on the inside of the van, it's also in court documents for crying out loud. Right, there's a lot more. They've also caused me criminal damage um, with my car. Um, I've even got an, a nurse that's witnessed this, and it's on medical records, and I have a recording. They said that I would not have to pay to have my car released, and then they charged me for it, causing me further financial distress and to have to pay to have my window fixed. And they are still saying that they, that, that they did not say that, despite the witnesses and evidence. The, like I say, the attempted murder has been ignored. Everything else has been ignored. Like I say, my life's been completely destroyed. All my dreams have completely disappeared. Um, I would like to have gotten better and eventually set up like a, like a, a sharing group um, with people with autism, not neurodivergent people. Uh, like ADHD autism um, to bring together musical instruments um, like electronic and sort of um, sort of normal and have I suppose normal instruments like guitars you know bass guitar drums uh, sitar um, tabla you know any kind of percussive type stuff all that to do like a blend of sort of say live and digital music sort of think along the lines of like thievery corporation and like Portis said stuff like that. But my life, say my life's been completely destroyed. I also thought about doing this thing called sidewalk science, um, but I'm just, you know, I struggle with people as it is, so but it was just an idea. Um, like I say, there's a lot more that's occurred. Um, I also did send in an appeal with regards to removal of temporary accommodation. I've caught Torbay Council claiming that they have not received it, but I've also got an email from them stating that they've actually received it. Um, I desperately need advocacy to help me with all these matters, especially this bail thing. One of the bail things is actually from Shelter, right? Shelter falsely accused me of something which I didn't say, and I've got a copy of the telephone call as well. And I've gone through the complaints process with Shelter up to their disgusting CEO, Polly Neat, and even she's just denied any responsibility, despite the fact that the evidence completely refutes anything that these idiots have said. But they had been colluding with adult safeguarding who have repeatedly abused me and they've turned around to this this like, pestiferous individual, this disgusting human being who is the antithesis of everything that Shelter stands for to call public enemy number one and claim that I said I was going to blow up a tank of nitrogen right, and that I was going to go out and hurt people. That is not what was said. Right, I've got a copy. I record my telephone calls with these people and I can prove it. But yeah, I was still arrested for absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Um, and again, shelter denied responsibility. Vile, putrid, evil human beings. I've had it with mind. 
Lynn Neville from Devonmind falsely accused me of something, and again I can prove it. She claimed I was rude and aggressive with her colleague on the phone. Not a word of truth to it, recorded it. I asked Lynn Neville where the evidence was. This has now been going two years. I got a threatening phone call from the filth public enemy number one saying that I'd harassed her. No, I didn't. Right, that's, that's how evil these disgusting human beings are. Right, I've had what's your problem here, Angie Manning claiming that it's unethical and immoral to pursue all these illegal evictions, attempted murder, ignorance and so on and so forth against me and she's refusing to respond. No subject access request, nothing. I've had it with solicitors and so on and so forth who have been paid off. Um, I've, like I say, I've got evidence of human rights abuses committed by Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Service as it was known then and the Crown Prosecution Service again. Uh, false allegations against me and I was prevented from disclosing evidence to prove that my ex was controlling and coercive and so on and so forth and they also committed um, further discrimination and so on at the time I happened to have a dependency upon alcohol due to abuse mentally physically they claimed that I'd not had a drink for eight hours so therefore couldn't be affected and that the interview was admissible no it wasn't and it wouldn't have been anyway because I actually denied to do the interview and the so-called appropriate adult refused to intervene to uphold my right to decline an interview. These disgusting scumbags have not re responded to me. And this is dating back now to 2019. Disgusting human beings and denied a subject access request. This is nothing compared to what else I can tell you what has happened to me and I am not putting up with it anymore. I have been contacted by whistleblowers and they have said that these people are deliberately uh, colluding together to cause me a lot of pain and suffering that they have communicated to deny me access to justice and care. And if you notice, a lot of these so-called services are all integrated now, hence this ICB and all that crap. Well, it's the same Sean Sawyer, a disgusting human being that needs to be dragged through the streets and hung up for what he's done. He should be prosecuted for misfeasance. Now, I spoke to a solicitor, and uh, you, you're probably aware that um, there's a lot of firms that will give you a, a, an initial free consultation, say up in about half hour maximum. This gentleman that I spoke with gave me an hour and 45 minutes and he was absolutely disgusted with what I've gone through and said he wished he could help me, but they were at capacity, there was nothing they could do. And some of the things they didn't have the area of expertise, but potentially other people could have. Um, I've been abused by cartridges, law and so on. Like My life has been destroyed. I've not eaten properly. I'm not well physically. I've not been able to do anything. That I, my, my life has been completely destroyed. Nobody prevented me from being homeless. Nobody safeguarded me. And I've been continually lied to, abused, neglected, arrested for this, that and the other. And I've had even solicitors and other people cause further hurt, distress to me and cause me severe pain and suffering. These people are evil and I need help. This is going public. As stated, I am going to do something very public. Right, uh, I've been my my website. I'm uploading that. Right, all the videos and so on. I've got to upload all the evidence that I possibly can. I'm going to have to do it bit by bit because I'm incredibly distressed. But I am not putting up with this anymore. Nobody is listening to me. Or people think I'm making it up. I'm not making it up. There is evidence. I can prove it. It has been proven. There's even been independent witnesses and firms that have confirmed these abuses against me. And not one person's paid the price for what they've done. And here I am bloody suffering. I'm in severe pain right now. Anyway, I've been rambling on now for 23 minutes and 18 seconds. So... I should end this, um, but I just needed to do this video because I am struggling to type at the moment. Um, I, I cannot cope. I, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm absolutely exhausted. This was completely preventable and I cannot cope anymore. Right, I've had enough. I just want to leave this country and die. I, I don't want to die in this country. No way. It's a cesspool. I hate England. Absolute corrupted cesspool. Right, yeah, uh, it's just been nothing but problems. Even my, you know, gladly ex-family, I have nothing to do with now. I could say there's a lot more that I could disclose, but I, obviously, you know, you've got your charity to run, and I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear me rambling on, but this is everything I've just said to you can be substantiated with evidence and witnesses. Anyway, I hope all is well. I wish you all the best with your, with your charity, but I'm not getting anywhere with any help and support I need. Um, and this can't go on. 
and it's just going round in circles because everybody just refers me to the very disgusting people that put me in this position in the first place. Um, one bit of pleasure that I have had, though, is the, the doctor that abused me committed assault and human rights abuses whilst in hospital in 2021 has been struck off. I don't know what for, but I am very much hoping it was to do with this because when I've been following his case um, or his record on the GMC register, um, <clears throat> there was a tribunal um, um, that happened just after... Um, what happened with me so but um i don't know I, I should be entitled to compensation um anyway like i say i'm rambling on now i'm in an awful lot of pain and suffering i'm really tired um i don't, I don't feel well i just don't want to eat uh, i can't cope with this anymore i don't know when this bail date is um i i can't speak to them i can't deal with emails anymore um, I'm I'm now in such a state after dealing with the emails tonight just to respond to yourself. But I thought, you know, I had to. I can't deal with this anymore, man. Like this is serious, and the people that are supposed to be helping just aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the solicitor that I've had, I don't know what on earth he's playing at, but he's not responded or anything. And I'm just like, oh, here we go again, and I'm in distress as it is. Like, really in distress. I cannot cope. Anyway, sorry. I, I think for umpteenth time now I've uh, said that I need to leave you to it. But anyway, um, I thought it was just easier to do this. Uh, and you didn't have to watch it. You know, it's something that you could just listen to, obviously, and put on in the background. But like I say, everything I've stated can be substantiated, verified with evidence, independent witnesses, investigations, so on. This is incredibly serious. Um, and I'm being denied any uh, right to recourse of health care and justice. This is pretty serious. Thank you.